I think last year was different because it was scary. We didn't really know, and we were just kind of holding out. Okay, we just got to hold out till that vaccine gets here. And now the vaccine's here, and we don't really have a light at the end of the tunnel. The other difficult thing is last year, you know, we were heroes. There was a lot of support. This year, people don't want to hear us talk about it. This year, the surge started in about September, so it's been a long, long period. Um, and it's also really difficult that the community doesn't understand what we're going through. Um, I have friends and family that don't even really believe what I'm telling them. There's a lot of burnout, I feel like, right now. Just everybody's exhausted, I think, because it's been going on for so long. Um, but everybody's sticking in there because we know that it's our community. We want to take care of our community. And, you know, that's, I feel like we're fortunate that we have a really good team that they're dedicated and they want to do everything they can. We've seen a very large influx of patients here. Um, we're in eight bed ER. And lately we've had to overflow into other areas to accommodate for the increase in patients. Um, I've heard numbers that we used to have around 600 a month and we're now seeing more like 900 patients a month. A fair amount of it is COVID related um, and our acuities of patients are actually much higher than they used to be as well. Um, so we're still seeing, you know, the heart attacks, the strokes, things like that. But then we also have COVID on top of it now. Some of the things we see here are really hard. Um, you know, we see younger and younger patients getting intubated now with COVID. It, so that takes its toll emotionally. And when you get home, sometimes you just want to zone out versus really being involved with your family because of it. We've never seen numbers like this before, where we've filled every room and have people who are in the emergency room for days waiting for a bed up here on our floor. I understand vaccine use is a personal choice, um, but it's saddening and, and frustrating to see so many people here who might not have had to be here if they had been vaccinated. We just don't have the people leaving the hospital as frequently as we did, so we don't have open beds on a daily basis where we have room for more people. With patients who are really sick and on ventilators, typically those patients need so much care from nursing that it has to be one patient for one nurse or two patients for one nurse. Whereas people who aren't as sick, one nurse might be able to handle four or five patients. So when we get a sicker group of patients, we can't take as many people because there just isn't enough nursing staff to go around and help with how sick people are. Our, our staff, uh, um, you know, you talk about being healthcare heroes and um, not only are they, um, you know, dealing with this every day, but, you know, in some cases they're dealing with visitors or people in the community that are, um, are putting them down or telling, telling them they don't believe that there's a problem and they're seeing it every day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was driving in here this morning. It's like, they're not, they're not only heroes, they're warriors. I mean, mm -hmm. th it, they ha you have to be really strong in order to take that every day. It almost feels a little bit like they're in a war zone or something. It's, you know, there's, you don't know when it's going to end, but you know, you have to kind of stay with it and keep working hard. And, um, and they're doing a great job, but it's tiring. Because we see how difficult it is to manage here and, there are a lot of folks in the community that, well, most people in the community don't see that. And um, maybe most people aren't cognizant of just how um, difficult it is some days to be able to um, take care of everybody here.